So welcome to everybody. Uh, we're absolutely delighted to be broadcasting you to you live from Tzfat, the old city of Tzfat. And we have with us uh, one of our greatest teachers, Rav David Basha. And uh, you had such a great success when you came, and I'm so glad that we managed to bring you back. Today's subject is going to be called Reincarnation Number 3. It's a follow-on from the reincarnation um, uh, shears that we did before. The, 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 the video is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Shlomo. I just wanted to bless everybody who is in this uh, lecture, Bezat Hashem, and bless all, of, all the soldiers of Israel. Amen. They should all come back with no harm, and all Israel will be loving each other, Bezrat Hashem, Amen. with God health and wealth, and only good news, Bezrat Hashem, for all of Israel. Okay, we're going to continue uh, the lectures about reincarnation. This is going to be lecture number three, Bezrat Hashem. And uh, before I say anything, <clears throat> If somebody thinks that we're, going to, we're saying here like wise things, and it's very interesting, uh, so I wanted just to mention again that in the movie of uh, Secrets of the Universe that I produced a long time ago, we give their proofs that the Torah, the Jewish Bible, was given by Hashem. So it's not only uh, just uh, wise things that we're saying, we're saying here what Hashem wants us to do in our lives, which is the most important thing that a, a man can hear. Can you imagine somebody is coming to life or go, going to get a job? And he's asking, to get a job, he has to have the knowledge to do whatever he wants to do. So he goes to a factory and they tell him, he says to them, I'm here to get a job. So they tell them, uh, what job do you want? whether you qualified for. Imagine if he says, I don't know. They say, okay, so what, do you, what job do you want here? It's the same thing here. We're coming to this world. We have a job to do. Imagine we're saying, we don't know what we, are, what we have to do here, but we'll live. There are 120, have steaks, and have a good time. And then before a person goes until 120, goes upstairs, he has no idea what, what, he, what he did here. So we're trying to Bezrat Hashem, show you the information, show you the, what Hashem is try, telling us in the Torah to do. And we're going to delve into reincarnation because it's a, a subject that's not being talked about and it's very, very important to know about reincarnation because it's part of our correction in this world. First of all, it says in the Torah, Bereshit bara elokim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz means that, first of all, HaKadosh Baruch Hu started building this uh, world, and then it took six days till man came to the world, and it seems like this is the, the, start, the beginning of the world. But really, in the Kabbalah, it goes a little deeper than that and says that. The Kabbalah says that the world was created in Yud Zayn Elul, Yud Zayn Elul, that's two weeks before man was created. What was created in Yud Zayn Elul? <clears throat> the Etz Chaim of the Ari says that Hashem created worlds and these worlds, worlds afterwards were destroyed. And then they, they created again a, a correction to the worlds and they were being corrected from Hafei Elul till, that's the creation of the world, till man came. What was the reason that the worlds were destroyed and created again? It says 10 things were created before the world was created. One of them is tshuva, tshuva, repentance. So, in order to have tshuva in this world, we need to have uh, roots, spiritual roots for us to do tshuva. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty, 
In Yud Zayn Elul, started, created the worlds, this, they were destroyed, and then they were again corrected. This was all because tshuva was created before man was created. Repentance was created before man, first man was created. Why? Because Hashem loves us. And he knows that sometimes we can chas v'shalom sin, and he gave us a way to correct ourselves. And that's why worlds were uh, fell down and they came back again. This is a root for us in our life to do tshuva, to, do, to come back to Hashem. So you could see how merciful he is, Ishtabach Shem He already gave us a medicine <clears throat> before the sickness came. So I can live in this world and say sorry and come back to him. And he'll forgive, Bezat Hashem. He forgives all the time, as long as we say sorry and uh, change our ways. Bekitsu, what we're, we're, we're doing here is, after the worlds were created and after they were destroyed and came back again, first man had a choice. Hashem gave it, told him, this is the tree of life. And he said, don't touch the tree of that. Don't touch it. Don't deal with it. It has there the, the good parts and it has also the evil part. So don't, don't deal with it. First man thought that he would do a big, big thing, L'shem Shamayim, really, to, to become even better if he ate from, the, from that tree. And then he will go down and he'll come back again there will be a bigger, bigger, bigger job even than what Hashem wants from him. And that was the sin. He went into a situation where he had a choice. And that choice was very, very hard because the evil forces are not simple. Are, it's very, very hard to fight against them. And Hashem warned him from that. In any case, because first man was a bank of souls, of oral souls, we were all in him, so we all were in that sin of first man. So we are starting life. This is six, around 6,000 years ago what I'm talking about. We're starting life with a deficit. We're already going into life with the sin that we did. Now, to correct, to correct this sin, because Hashem is merciful, and this was a very, very big thing, he gave us time, just like if uh, the bank says, listen, you hmm. can't uh, pay me right now because you're, you're in default or whatever it is, we'll give you six years you know, to, give, to give you a chance of six years to correct and come back and uh, give us the money. Same thing here. We came here with a sin. Hashem said, listen, to correct this sin, it takes 6,000 years. Hmm. I'll give you 6,000 years loan and you have to correct it. Now, each person gets, Be'ezrat Hashem, 120 years. What happens if he doesn't correct his sins? Hmm. What happens if he delves into more sins, if he's here? This is a big risk to come to this world. The Mishnah says, Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai, they had an argument between them if it's a good thing to come here, or it's not a good thing, not so good a good thing to come here. They decided, <clears throat> really what they're saying, it's a very risky business to be here. Hmm. But if you're here, at least do tshuva and correct yourself and don't delve into more sins because it's very risky. Hmm. You're here, we're risking every second our everlasting life. That if chas v'shalom, a person sins, he's in, a big, he's in the worst place. And if he, Bezat Hashem, all of us will do mitzvot, then he corrects, and he's in a beautiful place. So it's all our choice. It's all in our hands every second. Now, let me explain, first of all, what are the evil forces so that we are aware of what's going on with us. We think that the evil is not part of us. The person thinks that he, is, he, he goes to a movie, he sees people killing each other or on TV, whatever. Ah, these are evil people, bad people. Look, look at them, murdering, stealing. But little, little does he know that when that sin happened and first man 
took from that tree and the snake, which is the evil uh, forces, were in Gan Eden, in Eden, the Garden of Eden, and he dealt with them, the snake came inside us. What does it mean that it's inside us? Before he was, uh, we sinned, the evil was, was outside him. He would say just like uh, <laughs> what we said before, oh, this is evil, this is bad, but it's not in him. He was all pure, he was all good. But once he dealt with that tree, then the evil came in him. What does it mean? The evil forces are inside man. Where are they? They are in our thoughts. They are in our feelings. And they are in our body. <clears throat> you know, doctors say that our cells renew every seven years. Why seven years? I'll tell you why. It says in the, in the holy books. Mm -hmm. The snake, since he is inside us, <laughs> he, every seven years he has his skin, sheds his skin, sheds his skin and a new skin comes in to him. It's not only skin. He has a whole cycle of rejuvenation. Mm. We have the same cycle as him. Why? Because our body is part of the snake. <laughs> I know it's very hard to understand right now, but I'll explain to you. Look at us. We're going through life. All of a sudden, bad thoughts come into us. What do you mean bad thoughts? Adultery. Raleinu. Uh, sometimes a person thinks maybe I'll, I will steal, thinks uh, thoughts of thievery, thoughts of hate. Where are all these thoughts coming from? It's all coming from the snake that's inside us. What is the... So we have inside us nefesh behemit, which is nefesh behemit. It's an animal spirit, nefesh. I don't know how to say it in English. It's a nefesh of behemah, which means to say that every, every evil thing that's in this world is inside us. It's a shock, no? Because we think we're so good. We are good, Baruch Hashem. What's fighting this evil? Our neshama. A man is consisted of two things, neshama and guf, neshama and body. Neshama is the spiritual lights that come from Hashem, that's part of Hashem, that's inside us. The neshama wants to come to become close to Hashem. It wants to learn Torah, by the, the Jewish Bible, so that it can do mitzvot, so it can get close to Hashem. That's all the neshama wants. It doesn't want food, it doesn't want steaks, it doesn't want yachts, banks, it's not interested for the neshama. It wants to love your fellow Jew. It wants to do mitzvot. It wants to keep, keep, uh, make us close to Hashem. The body forces from the other side, they say, no, 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 forget, forget chas v'shalom, forget Hashem. We want COD pleasures right now. We want money. We want uh, steaks. We want yachts. <clears throat> and we want it right now with no, with no time now. But you ask the, the body, what about the future? If I steal, if a person steals, if he kills, there is, he has to pay for that. Tell this, no, 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 you won't get caught. Nothing will happen. But I have to serve Hashem. I'm here. I'm, he, he brought me over here to do work. No, 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 no. There's no work. Just have a good time. Have a pleasure. And these two forces, neshama and body wants, are fighting all the time inside us. If we don't hear these words that I'm saying now, we have no idea that there is a war inside us. We think that we're fine, we're tzaddikim. But there's a war every second. If a person looks and just takes time out from all the iPhones and all from all the craziness and starts examining 
the thoughts that are inside him. So I say, where did that thought come from? Mm-hmm. I say, wow, how, how, I, how I, can I think something like that? Mm. Where does it come from, these thoughts? Sometimes he says words that come out, he doesn't realize that it's bad words even, that he can hurt people with, with words that he says. Actions, feelings. If he doesn't know about these two forces that are in, inside him, that are fighting each other, he has no idea who he is and what's going on with him. So it's very, very important to know. You know why we, are getting, we get tired? Mm-hmm. You know, people are waking up after sleeping eight hours. Beautiful night from eight till six, a full night. They wake up, they have breakfast. After a while, you see them tired. You ask them, why are you tired? You didn't even start, let's say it's a <laughs> Sunday. You didn't even go to work. You didn't do nothing, he's tired. Why are you tired? <laughs> I ask you, why, why, why are we tired? Doctors will tell you all kinds of stuff, but they don't know the real reason. He knows the real reason. And he tells us, because there is a war between the neshama, which is from Hashem, and the body force, forces, mm. the neshama wants to go up all the time during the 120 years that we are here, go back to him and attach itself to him. The body brings it down all the time. Doesn't want to let it go. This interaction between the neshama and the the forces of the snake makes a person tired because it's a neshama inside the prison. He wants to get close to Hashem and the body says, no, 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 don't get close to Hashem. Be with me. I'll I'll show you what the good time is. I'll show you this. And that's why we're tired. And this is going on with us every second. Every second, we have a choice to do good, to do a mitzvah, or chas v'shalom, the opposite. For example, business. Business is a very, could be a very, very selfish thing. Because a person wants to get into business, he wants to make money. If he wants to make money, so he starts thinking, maybe he can trick this one and talk about this one and, and uh, make money even though that it's not exactly 100%, but it's money and he gives all kinds of excuses why he has to make money. And he, becomes, it, he can become very selfish. And as long as he makes a million dollars, he can step on 100 people without caring. It's a very, very... Uh, hard experience to be in business and to be, be honest and to be real. And at the same time, think about other people. Can you imagine something like that? That's a big tzaddik to do something like that. But the Torah expects us to do that. Why? Why, am I, why can I think that business can be a good thing? If I know that all my money comes from Hashem <clears throat> and Hashem gives me the budget of how much money I'm going to make in a year, from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. And if I know that it's not in my control, all I have to do is go to the office, but the results are not in my control, and it's all coming from him, then I can start thinking right about making money. I know that I don't have to trick anybody. I, don't know, I know that I don't have to steal from anybody. I don't have to trick and make people think all kinds of things and, and start being a hypo- hypocrite about things because I have to make money. No, it has nothing to do with all that. Hashem gives me the money, whether I go to work and do the actions, but I, what, what is work? Work is only an ishtadlut, it's only a, an act that I'm doing in, or, in order to get what Hashem wants to give me. Okay, so since life, is very, very challenging to anybody who comes here. Hashem gave us a beautiful thing. Risky, but it's a way out, (laughs) if you can say that. It's called reincarnation. We come over here, and how much life we'll have, how long we'll live, it's all decided by Him, yeah? doesn't matter how much uh, exercise I'll do, it's nice for the body, but how, much, how long you'll live, it's 
He decides it. Now, we come here. If a person asks, what am I doing here? He's already in the right track because he's looking for the truth. And if he's looking for the truth, Hashem will bring him to the manual of truth, which is the Torah. Everything has a manual. A car has a manual. How much oil to put into the car and who gives you the manual? The producer. A plant that you buy in a store has a manual. How much money, how much, sorry, right? How much I'm talking? <laughs> See what's going on, money. <laughs> how much water to put, to put it in the sun, in the shade. Gives you a little booklet, tells you how to treat the plant. Is there anything in the world that doesn't have, doesn't have a manual? No. Even a chair. You know that you can't bring heavy things and put it on it. It has a manual how to treat it. Give oil to the wood. So a man who is so complicated, there's no, nothing complicated in this world more than a man. The biggest doctors and scientists will tell you that. The millions and billions of cells that are renewing every second in our brains, you know, it can't even explain it, what's going on with us. So a man would not have an, a manual what to do with himself here in this whole life? Can you think that? And the more complicated the product, the wiser is the producer. Yeah? To get to the moon, you need some heavy scientists who are like really, really smart to do that. But to create a fly, anybody can do it. Nobody can do it. Maybe you can copy, but create from nothing, from, from, from something, nothing, I to create something, nobody can do it. He can do it. And he gave us the manual that tells us how to live and tells us why we're here. The first question that has to be asked is why am I here? It's a very simple question. I know a lot of people who asked it and they got an answer. Because if they thought, say to Hashem, why am I here? He'll show them why they're here. He'll get them to the Torah. And I saw, I've dealt with a lot, a lot of people who asked that question and came to the Torah, and they know exactly why they're here. And a person who knows why he is here is a happy person, because he has no doubts. He might have doubts if he's sin, not sin, but the direction, why he is here, is the most important question that he can ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. Reincarnation, we're coming back to that. Hashem brings a person gives a person the opportunity to come here and to correct himself. Three things are to be corrected. First of all, our relationship with Hashem. He is giving us every second air, water to drink, food. He's taking care of us like a mother takes care of a baby and more. Person gets sick, he gets healed. It's not only the, it's, the doctors are only agents that Hashem sends over here to heal a person. But every morning, we're being healed. Every morning. Our bodies are all the time, all the time, chas v'shalom, chas v'shalom, we should all be healthy, all the time are in a state of sickness. Why? Because the cells are getting older, everything is going, you know. And in the morning, Hashem sends refuah, medicine, to every one of us. Mm -hmm. You pay attention, you'll see, if a person is sick, at night, he feels terrible. Why? Because at night, it's a time of the evil forces. And his sickness becomes worse, chas mm -hmm. But you see him in the morning, he feels much better. All of a sudden, the temperature is less. Mm -hmm. And why? Because Hashem, brings him medicine. Now, we are here to correct. We have to understand that we have a relationship with the one that created us. And we have to listen to him, how to live. Again, I'm saying in the secrets, uh, in the movie that I have, Secrets of the Universe, by, da by Rabbi David Basha, will show you 
that the book, the Torah, was given by Hashem. It's very simple. It's the only blue book in the world that can prove itself. There's nothing else that can give you the information and prove itself that it's from Hashem except the Jewish Bible. Nothing else. Okay. The information is to the whole world besides the Jews. Because Hashem created everybody. And each one has a job to do here. Now, this is the first thing that I have to know. I have to say thank you to him. He brought, he, he brought, he gave me life. <clears throat> He's taking care of me. Even uh, you go to a restaurant and uh, the waiter comes and gives you food. Even you tell him thank you, right? And if you, you wouldn't tell him thank you, he'll, it will be a very, a very terrible thing to do. Because he's serving you, he's just taking care of you. You even give him a tip, more than a thank you. So to Hashem, that's giving us life here every second, taking care of us. And all he, all he wants to do, all he wants us to do is to become better. To become a better human being. How much thank you I have to tell him? So it's, it's only fair that I have to pray to him and thank him and give, give brachot. Tell him, thank you for the apple that you gave me. Thank you for, the, for the, the bread that I have. Thank you for a wife. Thank you for kids. Thank you for... So it's, not, it's a strange thing not to say thank you to him. Okay. So one thing is our, our purpose here, to serve him. That's one thing. Second thing, Hashem gave us inform, instru, sorry, instructions how to behave with each other. This is a very big, big thing because we're all the time uh, encountered with people and we have to behave right and we have to be tzaddikim, how to behave to them. This is another set of mitzvot that we have to know how to behave with each other. For example, how much do I give to another person? Where do I stop? This is, if you think about it and you look at yourselves, you'll see that every second we have to judge to give or not to give. Whether it's business, whether it's kids, whether it's wife, how much love even do I give to my friend? Am I gonna go with all my heart to him or have limits with him? Or to another one, I should really stay away from him. Or another one, there is business, how much do I invest or how much do I give to this guy to tzedakah? Or should I give tzedakah? My kid comes to me, Abba, I want uh, bicycles, I want this. I'm saying to myself, well, maybe I'll spoil him too much. I will ruin him if I give it to him. So all these decisions <clears throat> are told by Hashem how to behave here. So between man and man, we have the mitzvot. The third thing, Hashem says, you have to know yourself. How do I know yourself, myself? Why does Hashem want me to know myself? Because each one of us is different than the other. Each one has a different work to do here. Hmm. If you look at their thumbprint, you'll see every person in the world has a different thumbprint, completely. Why is that? This is to make you think that you are unique. And Hashem sends us over here <coughs> in the time that he sends us. For example, we are now, I'm talking to you, we're in a generation now. We are 216 years apart from the end of the 6,000 years. Why Hashem sent us to this generation? There's a reason. The reason is I have a correction to do and I can do it in this generation only. Hashem gave us a wife. Why did He choose, why did he choose this wife? Because this wife is exactly the one tailored, tailored made to correct me. Kids, these are the kids that will correct you. The food that you eat, this is the food you have to eat because this, this is where the sparks of life that came down that you, you, only you can bring them up to life again. This is why we choose apples that we like. This is why we choose the car that we like. 
That's why we choose the city that we like. What is all this liking? What is also the things that tell us to do that? This is what I should do. It's all Hashem talking to us. This is what you're sent here to do. You are here to be a doctor. You are here, okay, I'm a doctor. But you have to be in a certain place to correct yourself there. Okay. Learning Torah. I have to learn Torah so that I don't know what I, what I have to do in this world. All these things, it's a, it's a huge, huge 